First at four, one million dollars. The judge doubles the bond for this former police officer charged in the murder of George Floyd. New information from court and Congress. Paula. Hi, Karen. In another northern suburb of Detroit, there is a battle of the message and it's being painted on a rock. We were here when protesters decided to defend that message. Karen. The reopening of Michigan has folks 60 and over peeking out that window. What your family needs to know before those at risk start to reemerge. And Ben, the weather makes it more tempting. Yeah, Karen, good afternoon. We are headed to our first 90 degree day of the season tomorrow and the remnants of Cristobal coming in too. We'll tell you what that means for rain and storm chances right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and click on Detroit. Local 4 News first at four starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. At this hour, hundreds are paying their respects to George Floyd as new legal developments take place in Minneapolis and Washington, D.C. Let's take a live look at the public viewing for Floyd in his hometown of Houston. He died more than two weeks ago. The service being held at the Fountain of Praise Church where Floyd spent most of his life. His body arrived at the church this morning. Floyd died while in police custody in Minneapolis. Four officers are now facing charges and the video of his death has galvanized a nationwide movement. A private funeral service is scheduled for tomorrow, bringing an end to a very public morning across the nation. Let's get to Kimberly Gill. She's in the newsroom right now for the latest legal developments. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. As Houston prepares to say goodbye to George Floyd, the officer videotaped with his knee on Floyd's neck made a remote, remote court appearance this afternoon. Former officer Derek Chauvin said nothing during the 11 minute hearing. He appeared on closed circuit television for Minnesota's maximum security prison. He's now charged with second degree murder in Floyd's death. The, joy, the judge raised his bail to $1 million. It was 500,000, as you said. And in the criminal case plays out, Democrats in Congress have unveiled a sweeping police reform bill. They say it's time for change. Now the movement for police accountability has become a rainbow movement, reflecting the wonderful diversity of our nation and the world. The power of this movement will help move Congress to act. Democrats are going to fight like hell to make this a reality. Americans who took to the streets this week have demanded change. With this legislation, Democrats are heeding their calls. And the bill is called the Justice and Policing Act of 2020. It would ban chokeholds, no-knock warrants, and would create a national database to track police misconduct. We'll have more from Houston and Minneapolis when you join us tonight on Local 4 News at 5. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Here at home, we are waiting to see protesters start the 11th day of marching for justice with protests ending peacefully the last two days. Mayor Duggan announced today he's not renewing the city's 8 p.m. curfew. You're looking live outside of Detroit police headquarters, and that is where protesters usually start. We're going to keep checking in with this as it progresses. Mayor Duggan says the noticeable change in the nature of protesters led to his decision to not renew the curfew. We haven't seen those folks in five or six days. Uh, and so I think we're feeling confident now uh, that what we have is protests going on by people from this community who care about this community. Mayor Duggan says himself and Chief Craig are set to meet with a group of activists tomorrow. Protesters are also demanding justice in Monroe County after a white man faces charges for an attack on a black teen. Investigators say 18-year-old Devin Freeland Jr. was with friends Saturday when they were confronted by 42-year-old Lee James Mout. Police say Mout used racial slurs at the group, then went to his car, grabbed a chain with a lock, and then hit Freeland in the face. Freeland suffered a broken jaw, busted lip, and lost three teeth. Mount is set to be arraigned tomorrow on assault and ethnic intimidation charges. Moving to Washington Township right now, the battle over the Black Lives Matter movement is taking place with spray paint and an iconic rock that normally welcomes people into the community. But over the weekend, the peaceful message took a turn when someone painted racial slurs, and that's where we bring in Paula Tupman to pick up the story. Paula. 
Hey, Karen, let me give you a sense of where we are. And so 30 Mile Road is that way. And of course, the Detroit city is 30 miles south of here. This is Van Dyke, one of the iterations, one of the original Van Dykes. And then this is the iconic rock, which is usually a beacon of really unity. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Messages of hope that welcome you into Washington Township. That is until this weekend. Protests at The Rock on Van Dyke between 30 and 31 Mile Road in Washington Township. But when someone painted Black Lives Matter on The Rock over the weekend, and according to Dan O'Leary, the Washington Township supervisor, it then became the Battle of The Rock. Someone had uh, written a, a Black Lives Matter uh, sign on there, and then someone else came out and did an All Lives Matter, and it went back and forth supposedly all day long with people changing the sign to match their perspective. Last night, the Romeo High School varsity basketball coach, Marv Cushenberry, drove by and saw this. I looked at the rock and just couldn't believe what I saw out here in Romeo because we never really had problems out here. It said F Black Lives, and then it had the you know, the N-word cross at the bottom. When we saw the message this morning uh, with the racial slurs, it was really upsetting. This morning, the community came out to repaint the rock and people gathered to defend it. Trying to keep it a positive message instead of a negative message. I wanted to be out here for my babies and for everyone in this com community because we will not stand for racism. It's not, it's not what this community is all about and it never has been. It's a huge area for, um, it's a huge hub back in the day for the Underground Railroad. We have the Octagon House in Washington. You know, there's a house in Romeo that had, had, has ties to the Underground Railroad. So this, this, this is not what we're about. This is ridiculous. In the meantime, we are all out here together today to show unity, how we all need to stick together and fight this cause, fight what's really going on in the world. And it starts at home. I don't know who is stirring up the, the nonsense, but obviously people want other people to, to fight with each other. And that's not this community, and that, that's reflected by the fact that people come out and they, they stand guard to make sure nothing racist gets on it. That's not who this community is. We don't, we don't play that way. So I talked to Sheriff Tony Wickersham about an hour ago. He's the Macomb County Sheriff. They are who police Washington Township. And he says that there is an investigation. They're actually asking nearby businesses, and there are quite a few, for surveillance video uh, in hopes that they can capture any images of people who are actually writing those racial slurs. So there is an official police investigation. Karen? And I know you'll stay on top of it. Thank you, Paula. It is the day many people have been waiting for since the coronavirus crisis began. Today, local restaurants are allowed to reopen. Good news for businesses who have lost so many customers. And it's encouraging for many people who are ready to get out of the house to enjoy a meal. Our cameras were at the Hudson Cafe in downtown Detroit. Local Forest Priya Man has been stopping around town to see what you'll expect. I'm Priya Man at Pappy's in Greektown. Restaurants and bars in Michigan are starting to reopen, but things are going to look a lot different. From fewer tables to social distancing to wearing masks, everything you can expect if you're heading out. I think it's a really big step in that they'll be able to move forward and the economy will go back to normal. I've been ready to get out the house for weeks, honestly, and this is just the best day. And we're talking to restaurant owners. Some are eager to reopen. Others are taking it slow. That's coming up at 5. We do have another sign of life returning to normal right here. The Detroit Zoo in Royal Oak reopened its doors. Now, during the first phase, no more than 500 guests will be allowed on zoo grounds at any time with a max of 1,000 per day. Normally, that number would be 8,000 on a day like today. Also, you do need to schedule a visit right now. So we'll take you inside the zoo and show you more of what to expect when you join us at 6. Staying home has been particularly hard on seniors and others at higher risk. With more places reopening, many are wondering if it is safe to resume some of their usual routines, including visits with their grandkids. We asked an expert to share her thoughts on these important questions. There's not a magic age at which your risk is higher or like too high, but all of us need to consider what kind of risk is acceptable. Dr. Preeti Malani is U of M's chief health officer. She's also an expert in infectious disease and geriatrics. She says it's important for everyone to look for ways to re-engage in less risky ways. With all activity, it's about decreasing risk to the lowest possible risk. 
uh, we can't eliminate risk short of just staying home and never going outside. And that is also not a good option for most of us. That means going grocery shopping when it's the least crowded or sticking to delivery services if it's still too high risk. Doctors' appointments are essential, and Milani encourages everyone to reschedule canceled appointments. As for seeing the grandkids? This is a question that a lot of people have, and there's not a perfect time, and there's not a way to do it without any risk, but right now in Michigan, our numbers are pretty good, and if, if people have all been staying home and doing a good job of uh, maintaining social distance, the risk is acceptable to go and visit with your grandkids be outdoors. And that is always going to be a safer option than being indoors, washing your hands. And certainly if anyone has any symptoms, they shouldn't be interacting with anyone else. They should be staying home. And if those symptoms worsen, to be tested. Dr. Milani recommends you have a discussion as a family before you visit to figure out the best approach ahead of time. And if you are in a higher risk group because of health problems, consider talking to your doctor first. Our weather got off to a great start this week, but we are going to see some changes in the next few days. So let's get a little sneak peek from our good friend, Ben Bailey. Hey, Ben. Hey, Karen. Uh, good Monday afternoon. And yes, we are going to be sweating here before too long. In fact, 24 hours from now, we're going to be staring at our first 90 degree day of the season. But what you're looking at on 4Live radar right now, that is Tropical Depression Cristobal. They uh, issued the last advisory there on that storm, but it is heading to at least parts of Michigan. So we'll talk about where that's going. The other thing is this heat. That's gonna be the story this week and how far these temperatures are gonna rise and fall. 90 tomorrow, 60s for highs on Saturday. And you see the average there. We'll start to bounce back by Monday of next week, but we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes, Karen. Sounds good. Thanks, Ben. Still ahead, a new boost for black businesses. We'll tell you about something new online. And you may know the saying, politics makes strange bedfellows. There's new support for the civil rights protests in America from the Middle East. At first, how U.S. prosecutors are putting new pressure on a member of Britain's royal family. We'll be right back.